Veins will be like up my stomach. You don't have to explain yourself to anyone. You can do something because you truly want to. So right now it's 6 p.m., just wrapped up the work day and getting into some dynamic stretching. We have a shoulders, arm, and core workout. I'm gonna save core for the end of the workout. Ran this morning, logged a few miles. Now that we're in the cut, like I've talked about, my, my running mileage is increasing and when we were in the build, I was doing five miles every other day. Now we're running about five to six days a week, anywhere from five to eight miles a time. Starting to see visible changes in the physique already just a few weeks in. You can feel getting leaner, especially on some of these runs. It feels good. Progress feels good. I think progress feels good in anything, but especially when you set a goal, you have an objective, you have a date in mind, and you're working towards that, progress feels good. Before I say another word <clears throat> Just know that my intentions were pure But <clears throat> you can't stand to be in silence <clears throat> All you can hear is your own voice Fueling delusion in you Now the way I like to start off shoulder workouts is with lateral raises and I'll do a ladder. So I'll start with 20 pounds. I'll do 10 to 15 reps, very short rest, like 20 seconds. I just choose a top set and then I work my way back down. Shoulders are absolutely on fire right now and burning and pumped up. And now I'm gonna move into some pressing movements. So overhead barbell press uh, and then some accessory stuff before moving into arms. past week my one buddy silent Mike on Instagram posted that to be a bodybuilder you don't have to step on stage to be an endurance athlete you don't have to sign up for a race to be a, a triathlete you don't have to sign up and train for a triathlon it can just be the way that you love to train and what I've learned over the last decade of my life of sharing that with the world and documenting it and building a business with amazing people is that you don't always have to explain yourself. You don't always have to justify what you're, you're doing right now because of a true passion and love for this end result. Why do, you, why do you lift weights so much? Well, I'm training for a bodybuilding show. Why do you run so much? Well, I'm training for a marathon. You don't have to be training for said race or competition. You can do something because you truly love it. You are passionate about it, you enjoy it. It's what you wanna do. Sometimes you don't have to explain yourself. You don't have to explain yourself to anyone. You can do something because you truly want to. got done destroying shoulders. They're on fire right now. Moving into arms. So I'll do two supersets. Each superset is going to be something for biceps and then something for triceps. So we'll do two bicep movements, two tricep movements before moving on to core. I rarely have a day anymore where I just hit arms on their own. I used to. Sometimes I'll use an active rest day with an arm workout, strictly arm workout. But I get a lot of arm activation throughout the week with pushing and pulling movements. Cause I'm pretty much hitting back twice a week and chest twice a week, or at least every four to five days. 
That wraps up shoulders and arms. <sighs> Crazy pump. Surprisingly, I'm also only on about 250 grams of carbs. Up until today, I've had, let's see, I have consumed, I already have my last meal accounted for, so if I remove that, today so far I've had 169 grams of carbs. To get a really, really solid pump on lower amounts of carbs can be difficult, but we're still, we're still pretty early on in this prep, but the deeper we get, a few weeks, few days out from a show, you're pretty depleted. It's hard to get a pump. Tonight's pump though, it's just solid. So now we're moving into core. My core routine is three supersets total. I do this every other day. Each superset, it's a giant set actually. Each giant set is 15 hanging leg raises, 15 cable crunches, and then 15 GHG sit-ups, and I'll rest about a minute after doing that, and I'll repeat that three times. So we're gonna finish off with core. Core takes me anywhere from you know, 10 to 15 minutes every other day. This is the last giant set here. And what I know going to this last set is these last like seven reps of hanging leg raises, my core will just start cramping like crazy. I didn't do much core work during the build and I've really recently only started like reintroducing it. But these things will just destroy you when your core is not conditioned for them. Ah, that's 10, I'm gonna take a little break, do five more. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, woo, yeah. So official morning weigh-in, week number two. Uh, last week we weighed in at 217.4 and this morning was 215. So in the last seven days, I lost 2.4 pounds. So this morning, I'm deciding to switch it up a little bit and we are hitting some trail miles. So this is a trail, it's called Camp Tejas. I spent a lot of hours and a lot of miles here prepping for Leadville 100 in Rocky Raccoon. So we're gonna hit the trail, I got my trail shoes on. Not sure how many miles I'm gonna log. I'm just gonna hit some, some easy miles and enjoy the morning. It's a beautiful one. So, let's roll. All right, it's four miles out. That was an 805 pace. Got four miles back. So this run is gonna be an eight miler. Beautiful eight miles. Now I am running the Austin Marathon in about a month, but obviously not going for a PR. Haven't done a marathon prep and 
we're in the cut. But Alex, who's our brand director, he's running his first marathon and I'm pacing him. So over the next couple weeks, I'll get some bigger runs in, but nothing crazy. But today, this feels great. I mean, look at this. You want solitude. A morning run, that's one way to get solitude. But a morning run surrounded by this, it's on another level. Beautiful. Eight miles of trails complete in one hour and four minutes, 59 seconds at an 8.07 minute per mile pace. One thing that I think is worth mentioning is that you don't have to run to lose weight, but it can be a tool. I mean, I was running while I was building and bulking and putting on weight, but you can use cardio and, and running is a form of that cardio to increase energy expenditure. So to lose weight, to lose body fat, you have to be in a caloric deficit. That can be from eating less calories. That can be expending more energy or calories through training and, and cardio, or it can be a combination of both. And that's what I'm doing. I am creating a caloric deficit to lose weight through a reduction in calories. So the amount of energy I'm consuming, and then through energy expenditure, through training, through running. So calories are, are lower and I'm running more. So I'm burning more calories, which is facilitating the weight loss. I run because I love running. I love the, the physical and the mental adaptations that it, it creates and provides, but it's also a great tool to support this cut right now. But I just want to put that out there that you, you don't have to run to lose weight. And that's not even the reason that I enjoy running at all. But it, it can be a really valuable tool. So this week we made some changes to macros. We decreased carbohydrates to 250 and fats to 70. So now current macros, 250 grams of protein, 250 grams of carbs, 70 grams of fat. Most of the meals I consume on a daily basis are the same. Uh, it, it makes it easy for me to stick to a, a schedule and a routine, and then I'll make changes to certain meals. I'll take away or add as we're making changes to macronutrients and total calories, but these are probably 95% of the foods that I consume on a daily basis right now, every single day. So I'm gonna walk you through this. Yes, there are changes here and there, especially if we're going out to eat or if I wanna throw something different in, but keeping the foods and the meals pretty much the same makes it very easy for me to hit macros every single day and pretty much at the same times. So start over here working with carbs and then we'll move towards some um, some vegetables and protein sources. Primary carb sources right now, sweet potatoes, jasmine rice, sourdough bread. I have a, a slice of sourdough bread every morning for my breakfast. Uh, fruits, we have bananas, blueberries, raspberries. Uh, I in included these in here because they are nutrient powerhouses. Uh, strong reds and strong greens. Take these every single morning. If you wanna try any of BPN's products, go to the link in our description and shopbpnsubs.com. Moving into some protein sources, non-fat Greek yogurt. I'll add this with uh, protein powder for my third meal of the day. Cottage cheese, I will occasionally add a serving or two of cottage cheese in the evening if I need more protein, but also being aware that there are some carbs and uh, fat in cottage cheese, depending on what what kind of cottage cheese you get. Like this one right here has 4.5 grams of fat per serving. Uh, breakfast every morning, we have eggs, so right now, my fats being 70 grams, I can still add some more fat in. Egg whites and whole eggs. Uh, over here, protein sources. So I'm not consuming any ground beef right now just because when I was consuming 80-20 or 85-15 ground beef, it is higher in fat. So 
my primary red meat right now is elk. And then we have chicken thighs and chicken tenders. If I'm really getting lower on, on fats for the day, I'll add in chicken tenders, which are very, very lean. So again, four ounces of this chicken breast tender, one gram of fat, 24 grams of protein. Uh, but I would ideally like to add more chicken thighs in my diet than tenders because there's more flavor. Vegetables here we have, I'll do broccoli, I'll do broccolini or asparagus, but primarily steamed broccoli. And then for some volume, we have a uh, baby spring mix and some spinach. Protein sources as well, we have whey protein and then a vegan plant-based protein. Now, to add some like, more volume, if I'm, I'm getting hungry for the day, uh, something I'll add in his pickles. Now, you can't consume this whole jar of pickles and expect nothing to happen, but I'll add one, two, three pickles a day. Condiments-wise, mustard, zero calories. I'll do this stone ground Dijon mustard, which just adds a little bit more, little more flavor. Uh, I'll have one to two servings of this a day. This is Primal Kitchen's buffalo sauce. Now in one tablespoon of this, there is 3.5 grams of fat, one gram of protein, one gram of carbs. So I'll only do one to two servings a day and I do weigh that. One serving is 15 grams, I'll put that on the scale. And my go-to salad dressing right now you know, I'll just do spring mix or a, a baby spinach and I'll add in some lemon. I'll cut up like half a lemon. I'll squeeze half a lemon on there. I'll add some red wine vinegar and then sea salt. And that is a, a zero calorie salad dressing that I'll use. So these are the primary foods that I'm consuming on a daily basis right now. We got the boys in the sauna, so we're doing two rounds. Each round is gonna be 15 minutes in the sauna at a little over 200 degrees. And then we're gonna go hop in the pool, which is 10 feet away from where we're at right now. The pool right now is about 50 degrees, so we'll stay in there about three minutes, and we'll, we'll, we'll repeat that for two rounds. It's nice and hot in here right now. That pool, it's about to be cold. Into the deep end. The more you move, the colder it is. They said the people that try to be really serious to stay still are heating themselves up. And so when you move, you're actually making it more painful. <laughs> He's sucking. He's crawling out. It's an initial shock that really gets you. Yep. And we're going right in the sauna. Dude, if you spread your legs at cold water, <laughs> your breath. All right, there's three minutes. Sauna, baby. You can get in. Woo! So Huberman said on his podcast that when you have cold exposure, uh, a cold water exposure, cold plunge, you can lose between 30 and 80% of your cognitive function. And you can tell like when, when, you, when you jump in the pool uh, or you jump in a cold plunge, you'll start saying things that you normally will not say. Like you're, you're just brain dumping all these things. Now we're back in, back in the heat, soaking it up. Anyone else shivering? Huh? You shivering? I love this. 